I'm Irene Trudell here on WFMU, and joining me in the studio is Elephant Micah, Joe O'Connell, and Matt O'Connell, who are uh, going to be playing some songs for us tonight. They have a brand new album called Genericana, which I'm going to have to ask you a lot about. <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Doing well. Yeah, really well. Thanks for having us no, here. I'm so glad you were able to make it, and we got Bryn Scherenberg engineering tonight. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just introduce the songs as we go, and we'll take it from there. All right. Here's one that's new in our repertoire. I think I'm calling it Eastern Callers, and uh, wrote it on the banjo, but uh, we're going to see if we can do it on the electric guitar and drums. Sounds good.
Elephant Micah here on WFMU. And what was that last tune? That was uh, a couple different pieces of uh, kind of a rewritten track. Originally it was called If I Were a Surfer. Uh -huh. And uh, we kind of chopped it up into pieces and have been making new songs out of it i and, see uh, <laughs> and so so it doesn't quite have a title i'm guessing uh, or it doesn't quite have a title yeah. but it sort of appears on the record in a couple different forms uh one on each side and and so it's kind of uh it's part of a an effort to kind of take songs that existed in more straightforward forms and to reimagine them and uh, kind of use them for spare parts. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, uh, the new album we're talking about is is Genericana and uh, kind of a different direction in some ways, but not entirely, because uh, most of most of what I know about the band's music is is it's a more naturalistic sound, a little little woodsy and uh there's some some weird little elements creeping in there, some some strange keyboardy sounds and uh, effects and and it seems like a concept album to me. Um, is that is that on the money? I, I think uh, close? so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was an album, an album searching for a concept. Mm -hmm. It's looking for its concept 
and <laughs> I think I'm still looking for it, but you know, the album is a, a reflection of that search. But I I, oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I like I didn't didn't think of it until now, but um, what you said about the woodsiness, I think one way to think about the what makes this album different is that it features instruments that aren't made of wood. Uh huh. <laughs> Well, but you have one made of wood in your hands there. You've got a guitar, and and Matt's got some uh, drums with wooden frames. So, but I understand what you're yeah. you're saying. It's we had to make some concessions because the stuff that we used to make the album, we couldn't figure out how to get it to work again. <laughs> oh, okay. So, we are they like cast off uh, pieces and parts? Uh, toys and old instruments and yeah and and stuff that yeah it was just things that we didn't didn't know how to play really is that <laughs> fair to say yeah i would say so there's a lot of uh, craigslist hunting for new and unique items uh-huh well uh yeah i see you've got a a keyboard that uh what what did you call it before a, a arpeggiator oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's an so we had to, we brought the guitar and the drums because we kind of know how to use them. Okay. And if we brought the other stuff that we used to make the album, it, it would have just been chaos. <laughs> so, but we did, we're trying to compromise a little bit, so we do have at least a little bit of chaos Good. incorporated in this. And that, and that keyboard with the, it's got sort of a MIDI cable that um, has a, a special um, it's a special MIDI cable that does something, and we don't understand it oh. fully, but <laughs> we're trying to use it. And I think that's part of the, I think that was part of the idea of the album is to kind of have fun with this stuff that's kind of, sort of high tech in a way, but mm -hmm. high tech but low tech. Yeah. <laughs> well, it it works. It works on a lot of levels, and you still create a wonderful atmosphere throughout the whole album. Thank you. And. Uh, I want to read something that I s that you have on your your Bandcamp page, which is okay. kind of uh, it really struck me as funny, but um, it's a I guess a description of where where you're headed on this uh, this album. Hey Clayton, check out this flyer I found with an alien face on it. Whoa, huh? Trippy pastures. That's weird. Yeah, it says it's at the old National Guard Armory in Ellettsville. Oh, by Hardy's? Yeah, okay. My parents think we're going to going on a marching band trip, so I guess we're in the clear. Awesome. It's 3 a.m. in America. That's the hour when devotees of the underground dance party must answer the eternal question, is it time to chill out? I think it's always time to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool reading. Thanks for reading that. Oh, thank that. you. Sure. <laughs> I, when I wrote that down, I was hoping that one day some voice actors would actually, <laughs> you know, perform it. And you've done that in a great way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But so what is Genericana? Um, Do we want to answer that later? <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to hear some more music first and see where that goes? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I... I a sense that I could get a little long-winded and and still not have a good answer. So, <laughs> yeah, music sounds good. All right. What are we going to hear next? We're going to do a song called Patron Departs. <laughs> Patron 
station In the lighthouse By the lakeside When my patron
We're just sitting in here and, and going, ah. <laughs> cool. This is really, uh, yeah. really lovely. Yes. Um, yeah, I hope we're achieving the chill out effect that we were talking about. I would say 100%. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have, uh, we have Joe and Matt here creating those chill out effects here. And uh, they perform as Elephant Micah. And uh, the new album, Genericana, out on uh, Western Vinyl, as the last album was. And the last one was, what, three years ago? Mm -hmm. And those were not even new songs. Those were, uh, those were older songs that you recently had recorded and then put out. But um, That's this, true. The new one, uh, Genericana, I, I like the themes, surf A, fire A, life A, life B, fire B, and surf B. So genericana. <laughs> do yeah. we want to explain it or do we want people to just sort of figure out? Um, well. Has to do with culture, right? It's it's like what's happening I in our culture. So. I think um I think what you said about it feeling like a concept album um, makes sense to me. I think I was trying to uh, make decisions that felt like they belonged in a concept album, but without knowing what the concept was. So <laughs> it was kind of like being on the track of this mysterious sort of this thread that would somehow tie together these these elements and these ideas that I thought might have some connection and making the music was kind of like a process of searching for those connections. But, uh, well, sometimes yeah. the work just presents itself in the process and, you know, by the time you're done, it's like, Oh, it's this thing. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of nice. Yeah. I, w I wanted it to feel sort of like an album that was intended to be deep <laughs> but it, it's not actually necessarily deep. Okay. <laughs> but is it a commentary on on anything that's been happening lately, or is it uh, just? Uh, I I don't know. To be determined. That's a uh, yeah. I'm still I'm still trying to find out. Yeah. Um, we've been as we've been traveling, we've been having a lot of conversations about this kind of thing with friends of ours, and I think they've been shedding some light on on the fact for me that making stuff i don't know that you don't necessarily make stuff because you have a clear message or idea to deliver but more because you're searching for it and i think that's definitely true and i think i guess maybe i was searching for something that would connect sort of the idea of american identity mm -hmm. to all of these different kind of you know the, like the passage you were reading earlier um, was sort of um, referencing uh, the rave culture that I saw in rural Indiana growing up and sort of how that electronic dance music spread to small towns like the one we lived in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think I was trying to meditate on what do all these things kind of... Right. Uh, what can we take from them... Um, you know, that'll be a, uh, a way for us to reframe who we are in a way that makes sense now. Well, one thing I'm, I'm struck by, too, is that, you know, you're also, you know, in, in real life, a folklorist, which, uh, you know, I guess you're, you're trying to discover what, where things came from. You know, it's, uh, is it a documentation process? You're, you're dipping into old cultures. Is that uh, what you do, or or is yeah. or do I even understand what you do? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> I think, I think. Um, so I have a number of other friends who've who've also studied in this academic field that 
um, you know, that has the the name folklore. That's a very confusing name. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think what we have in common and what what our work has in common is kind of just yeah that curiosity about culture and identity. And so yeah, that was something that I did. Um, I did some graduate studies in and have have subsequently um, worked for folk arts organizations and done work trying to support other artists Mm -hmm. kind of through that, through those kinds of programs. Um, But yeah, the the idea of of folklore could be really confusing and <laughs> sure well one um, I was thinking of um, a duo I recently met uh, Anna and Elizabeth do you know mm-hmm. about them yeah and they do a similar thing in their own way they they travel up and down the east coast trying to discover mm-hmm. the um, the music of local cultures and you know hidden treasures and that sort of thing and. You know, I, I don't know if that's similar to what you do or not, but yeah, sometimes yeah, I do I do a lot of different kinds of work for a day job to try to support my music habit, and occasionally occasionally it looks kind of like that where <laughs> right. you know you're out meeting artists and and uh, you know trying to um, collaborate with them on projects that are designed to support what they do. Um, yeah, so I guess in some there are some similarities to kind of the historical notion of the folklorist who kind of goes out into the world and collects, but in general, um, I think we've tried to move towards something something that's not quite as uh, imperialistic <laughs> and something that's a little bit more uh, collaborative and takes into account uh, more of the uh, cultural justice. Uh, questions surrounding those kinds of partnerships yeah Mm -hmm. so and then all what all that has to do with music uh, you know the elephant mic of music i'm not sure um (laughs) but yeah that's that's it's all kind of coming from the same i guess curiosity about what people are into in Mm -hmm. in their little niches yeah yeah well elephant micah here in the studio for us tonight And uh, I'd love to hear another tune. Great. We'd love to play one. And what's this one called? What is this one called, Matt? I think this one is called Surf A or B or C. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So so the ones that are called Surf A and B on the album, um, yeah, those are the variations on the song If I Were a Surfer. And then we've come up with yet even more variations that are part of the live thing. So this is maybe surf C or D or (laughs) E.
I think I'm going to call that Surf F for FMU. How yeah. about that? <laughs> That's awesome. Good idea. <laughs> Elephant Micah here in the studio today. Bryn Scherenberg at the audio controls. Helping make it sound all really pretty. And the album, the album actually is not going to be out for another month. Mm. It's uh, coming out in the beginning of August. So uh, you're going to have to pre-order, if you want, from Western Vinyl. Um, and actually, uh, through Bandcamp, you can get, you can pre-order it, and there's, a, there's one of the tracks is available. Um, you can also join the Portal to Palmyra, which is, uh, which is your subscription music club. It's actually a pretty cool idea. Yeah. You want to tell people what that is uh yeah i do uh portal to palmyra okay palmyra okay i think palmyra could well i could be pronounced that way too that's just my bad pronunciation <laughs> uh yeah i set up this subscription to kind of give myself assignments that i could do quickly and to kind of keep me making stuff uh while the kind of the production cycle of of records um you know it's it can take a while so i wanted to keep making stuff and i thought as as long as i'm making it i want to share it with people so i don't know i wanted it to be sort of like a place to feel like a place where you could go and uh so that's where the the idea of the portal came in uh, it's it's just fun. It's like yeah. a, it's a fun uh, additional project to have going on, and well, it keeps you creative. Yeah, you know, and and whether they end up on an album or not, you know, they're their own entity for the time being. Yeah, it, it keeps us uh, experimenting. Sure, because it's sort of a low pressure, uh, sort of like a low pressure, low stakes sort of thing, because we're sharing it just with our, you know, our our club. Yeah, 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 and it's just five dollars for the year. That's pretty. That's pretty cheap. I wanted it to be cheaper, but um, <laughs> apparently that's the minimum. Oh, I see. That yeah, yeah. But that's that's actually really great because you know I I signed up for it and and all these things are appearing in in my uh, in my uh, Bandcamp inbox. Oh, that, you know, which is really nice. Thanks for signing up. I sure. didn't know that you did that. That is really well. Why really not? Flattering. I Thank like I like to that. support musicians I like. So. Thanks a lot. But uh, you t you folks out there can do the same thing. You just go to Bandcamp and uh, sign up for the Portal to Palmyra, or actually through the Elephant Mica website, elephantmica.com. Simple enough. Yeah, come on in. Yes. Come on into the, <laughs> the portal. Hey, what what is where does Elephant Mica come from? Is that a is that yeah. something you can answer? Yeah, I'll. Yeah, I can. I can answer that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, the band is just named after someone else who who had the name Elephant Mica. Oh. They had adopted the name as a kind of persona, and it was a. a how old was was Elephant Mica? 
Uh, I think he was probably a five-year-old. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he was a kid that Matt knew, actually. Yeah, he. Uh, I went to preschool with him, and um, he adopted the identity of Elephant Micah at an early age. Okay. And, um, uh, got into a lot of trouble in preschool. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, like like the rest of us did. But um, and then I grew up with him throughout high school, and um, Joe had named his music project after him, and. Um, I think maybe to his surprise, but um, <laughs> we still keep in touch. He's oh, a that's nice guy. sweet. He teaches at my mom's high school now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he seemed like a real character, uh, and I think that was inspiring or kind of amusing to name a band after. <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elephant Micah is here in the studio playing some great music for us tonight and what do we have next well we're gonna do one more song all right and uh this is a version of the song still life blues uh, which again is one of these ones that we've kind of chopped up and reformatted and and added electronic uh elements to uh matt matt plays uh, uh the homemade synthesizer that he built uh, on the on the album version of this, um, how did you build a synthesizer? Is it from a kit, or uh, um, it was it was a project for a couple of years. Ah. I moved to uh, the Triangle from Asheville, North Carolina, and um, Joe and I kind of dreamed up this new idea for a kind of a modal, uh, shrewdy box type synthesizer. Mm. And um, so I moved to a new area and I didn't really know that many people and I was living in this house alone and just working on it for a good year and um, built built this kind of custom digital synthesizer. Oh, that fun. Period. I admire your, uh, your doing something like that. I can't follow through with projects. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very good at starting them and, and abandoning them when I reach a... This is one Crisis of the rare point. circumstances where the <laughs> all of the elements align to mm. make it happen. Yeah, and good that you're able to use it in in some of the music. So mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, uh, one more from Elephant Micah here on WFMU. Okay, so this I guess this is called uh, Life F for FMU.
I see that you're collected. Life F, we're calling that a beautiful little way to end this live set here on WFMU. And we have uh, Joe and Matt O'Connell to thank. You are brothers, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I just, well, yeah. you know, sometimes that's not always the case. I thought it was, but mm-hmm. I just couldn't couldn't remember at the moment. We still are. Um, <laughs> still going, still, still going strong. And have been uh, doing this for many years under the name Elephant Micah 
And uh, I'm just so glad we were able to finally bring you out to FMU to do a live set. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. We're really uh, honored to be here. Yeah, we are big fans. Well, I'm a big fan of yours, too, so it, it's Mutual Admiration Society here. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the the new album, Genericana, is uh, coming out, uh, I think it's August 4th, I saw, uh, through Western Vinyl. And uh, my thanks to you guys for coming out to play tonight and to Bryn for engineering. This was really special. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, and thank you, Bryn. Thank you. All right. Thank you.